it's Em and welcome back to my channel. If you're brand new to my channel, welcome. My name's Em, I'm a former zookeeper and I'm a digital animal educator. If you haven't already, remember to hit that subscribe button down below, become part of the Creature Crew and also hit that notification bell down in the corner there so you don't miss a single upload. Today I'm going to be diving into the crazy world of Craigslist animal adverts. Hold my hairspray. <laughs> if you're unfamiliar with Craigslist, it's a website in the USA where people buy, sell and trade different goods, services and items, and even animals and pets. It's a bit like the Wild West on Craigslist. You just never know what you're going to find when you go into the community slash pet section of the website. So today we're going to get probably a little bit angry. However, we are also going to be learning a lot about the animal care that these animals do actually need and just marvelling in the absurdity of a blue hedgehog. A blue hedgehog. We'll come on to that in a little while. But before we jump into today's video, I want to give a nice hearty shout out to Kitten Match. Kitten Match is a beautiful app that you can play which simulates saving kittens, getting them back to health and also restoring a beautiful old house. Kitten Match is currently holding a Hello Kitty stamp event. During the event, you can log in to claim special Hello Kitty stamps. Once you've collected 10 stamps, you can exchange them for adorable Hello Kitty props. Also, during this event, there are tons of bonus Hello Kitty images in the game. It's really cute. When you complete the level and receive the special Hello Kitty coin, you can decorate your scenes in this gorgeous and sweet Hello Kitty Dream Carnival style. Look at it, it's so cute. Are you currently playing Kitten Match? If you are, let me know your favorite kitten down in my comment section. My favorite right now is... Abu! If you'd like to join in the fun, head down into my description box below where you will find a link to Kitten Match. Now, obviously, I have been loving Kitten Match, but don't just take my word for it. Kitten Match has over 11,000 positive reviews and an average score of 4.8, which is almost perfect. Touch the kitty. Touch. Good boy! Did you touch the kitty? So, Craigslist animal adverts. Oh my goodness. This is a video that I've been wanting to do for a while because if you're familiar with me and my channel, you know that I occasionally do pet YouTuber reacts to various animal types of videos like animal TikToks. Um, there's like a whole playlist of them. Go and check it out if you want to, but I've never done the Craigslist reactions because I'm just, I'm, I'm afraid of my reactions. Like I just want to get on the phone and speak to so many of these um, advertisers and be like, um, hello, yes, this is Emzotic. What are you doing? So, uh, yeah, I'm, I've been a little bit afraid of myself, but we are composed today. Today we're going to be focusing on the Denver, Colorado area. Um, I don't at present have the energy and the mental bandwidth to even think about going into either the Texas or Pennsylvania realm of um, Craigslist, but let me know if at some point you do want me to go there because, oh my god, that is gonna be a circus. That will be a circus. Because of the generally more relaxed laws in those states, but even in Colorado we're seeing a little bit of um, absolute nuttiness, so let's just dive on into that, shall we? Bunny for sale for a hundred dollars. I don't have time for the bunny at all I want is to... I don't have time for the bunny at all, all I want punctuation punctuation matters I don't have time for the bunny at all all I want is to find him a nice loving home he's a sweet bunny very friendly and due to work I don't give him enough attention I am including a cage I don't know in what realm this is is a cage. This is actually a collapsible uh, pet crate, one that someone might buy from, say, a Petco or a PetSmart um, and use for crate training a small dog. Um, and I say a small dog because this is a small crate. Um, it also has a slide-out tray at the bottom. Um, this is not suitable in any way for this rabbit. 
and my fear is that somebody is going to look at this advert and think, hey, Easter's coming up, my son or daughter or niece or nephew, whoever wants a rabbit, let me go and buy this relatively cheaply priced um, rabbit because it comes with a cage. It sounds like a good deal, but it's, it's really not. Um, this cage crate is not um, suitable for this rabbit. I feel so sorry. It's such a beautiful rabbit, but this is so sad. What I can see here already is that this rabbit has been gnawing on the sides of this uh, crate. That's going to be terrible for the teeth. Also, speaking of the teeth, I don't see anything uh, in this enclosure which um, leads me to believe that this rabbit has anything to gnaw on. Um, so rabbits have teeth much like rodents which never stop growing. They constantly need to be working those teeth and filing them down otherwise they can actually become overgrown. Um, in some really rare circumstances they can end up piercing through skin um, and they can become very difficult make it very hard for the rabbit to actually eat. Um, so rabbits much like rodents though they're not actually rodents, um, they are lagomorphs, uh, they, they need to be able to chew. And this rabbit has been chewing on these metal bars, so it could even be ingesting some of that metal coating, which is not great for the rabbit at all. The floor that it's on, they have a little bit of some kind of sawdust or maybe some aspen shavings I don't know whatever it is it's not suitable already I can tell um, because it is severely soiled the, this rabbit has peed all over it and this person didn't even have the good grace to clean it out to make the enclosure nice the feet as well of the rabbit are white but they appear here to be quite yellow so again indicative that it's been sitting for some time in its own urine and feces which is just horrible um, there is some I think celery in there my goodness I hope that it's got proper rabbit food you can't just feed celery or carrots to a rabbit. I hope that this rabbit goes to a really great home, somewhere that has ample space where it can actually run around um, because really just like one hutch or an enclosure like this is not enough. Um, traditional hutches are really cruel for rabbits and um, they need really nice large wide open spaces to be able to walk around. They're actually very intelligent, they like to interact with their surroundings. You need to be able to be hands-on with your rabbit so I hope it goes to a really good home where someone will uh, be able to give it a much nicer environment to live in. Next up we have an advert which is advertising a giant day gecko. I'm assuming by giant day gecko they mean Felsuma grandis which is one of the most beautiful species of gecko out there uh, but you would never be able to tell from these pictures there's a lot wrong here that we're gonna dive into but first of all if you're advertising something at least make it look good allow it so people can actually see the animal unless you're trying to hide something about the animal that is but this is just all over a really great example of how not to advertise. Oh, I'm being snarky today. I am rehoming a giant day gecko. I'm asking $100. You get everything in the picture, light canister, bulbs, cage, crickets that are left with the cricket holder, water bowl, food bowls, hide, and bushes. Speaking of bushes right off the bat, this enclosure setup is all wrong for a giant day gecko. First of all, it is way too small. I don't know exactly the size. This looks like maybe a 15 or 20 gallon at most. It's also a very horizontal setup. It's a terrestrial setup. Um, and the giant Madagascan day gecko is not a terrestrial species. It's an arboreal species. They want to be able to climb. They spend their time up in the treetops. Um, this is not adequate. This day gecko is probably super, super stressed from not being able to gain some height. If it is scared, all it can do is run to the side or run down or hit a corner. So this is really not big enough for this day gecko. It really says something about the care of this uh, arboreal gecko when the cricket tub, uh, it literally its food tub, is, is about a third the size of the overall living space of the gecko. That, that's kind of sad. I don't know why there's a cave on the floor either. This day gecko is not gonna wanna use that cave. And look at the positioning of the lighting here as well. The lighting is situated right bang in the middle of this enclosure, which means that 
the um, light as well as the heat generated from the light. I don't know if there's just light or a heat lamp in there as well, um, but even so, if it is just light, there's still going to be heat coming off of it. Um, it's going to be circulating throughout the entire enclosure, which is not good. When it comes to keeping reptiles, you want to usually, as standard, have a warmer end and a cooler end because reptiles are cold blooded, they're exotherms, they need to be able to thermoregulate. They should be able to choose a warmer side of the enclosure or a cooler side of the enclosure. This gecko is probably squished up in the corner here because it's probably a little bit too hot. Um, so again, that's, that's another issue with this setup. I also don't know why there's an actual water bowl in there, like a water dish. These geckos will seldomly drink from a standing body of water. What they prefer to do is actually drink from misting. So if you mist the enclosure, the water droplets that form on the foliage on the sides of the enclosure, that's more likely to encourage them to drink. If you're going to keep an arboreal species, consider a really nice enclosure, something like a two by two by four, so nice and tall and arboreal, or like the Zen Habitat. Zen Habitats, oh my goodness, I'm just going to throw it out there. I'm a Zen Habitats affiliate. Zen Habitats are the enclosures I keep all of my reptiles in. They're fantastic. I want to rescue this guy and put him in a two by two by four. Like, that's what he deserves. Anyway, if you want to go and support me and my channel by purchasing wonderful enclosures for your animals, feel free to go down into my description box below. I will link Zen Habitats down there. By the way, I'm just going to throw it out there. Um, so many of you have been using my affiliate link thank you it does make a difference and zen habitats as far as paying their affiliates are super fair so it's not like i'm just getting like oh like a penny or two they're really fair so it is actually really helping to support my channel when you do decide hey i'm gonna upgrade my animal or buy some new accessories if you use my affiliate link down below i do get like a good hefty cut of that so thank you so far if you've been using my affiliate code thank you if you keep it in mind for the future you can always bookmark this and come back to it but yes this gecko would thrive in a two by two by four pvc panel by uh, zen habitats that's all i'm saying <laughs> I really hope that the person who is selling this animal has been misting the enclosure a couple of times a day. It's super dry here in Colorado and really warm at times of the year as well. Um, but this animal is going to be severely dehydrated if they're not misting and if they're expecting this gecko to drink from a little dish. Okay, I wasn't sure if I was even going to put this in because it's not the animal that's for sale, but it is the animal that's making me laugh. This advert is advertising goat milk, but who wants goat milk from this goat? Look at this goat. Nothing good is going to come from this goat. This goat is going to single-handedly take over the world and run us into absolute chaos. You couldn't pay me to do anything with this goat's milk. Nothing. <laughs> This next pet advert is for an Argus monitor and it simply says male Argus 600 rehome. You can't leave us hanging like that, seller, with no information. We want to know his hobbies, what his aspirations are, what his star sign is. Feel that every season. It's my birthday season. It's my birthday on April the 14th. But seriously, this enclosure is way too small for an Argus monitor. Argus monitors, they reach about four and a half to five feet in length, sometimes a little bit more, um, depending on the care of the animal and the genetics, but this is way too small. I'm looking at this enclosure, I'm guessing it's no bigger than a four foot, um, just judging by the size of the lamps, um, the positioning of the doors, um, the kind of lock, I think that that is one of the Zoomed sliding door terrariums, maybe Zilla actually, um, and the size of the uh, the cord and the switch for the lamps. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to say this is a four foot at most. It might even just be like a three and a half foot. Um, certainly nothing over a four foot though. This is really, really small. Um, and this Argus monitor needs a lot more space, like a lot more. Um, it looks in decent condition, which is good to see. You know, it does, it looks nice and alert. Um, it's got some size on it, it looks like it could do a little bit more hydration perhaps. Uh, but overall, looking at the actual body condition of this Argus monitor, I have no complaints. But it's probably only eating because there's nothing else to do. It's in confinement, it is in lockdown in its enclosure with nothing to do but eat. 
and I relate to that so hard. <laughs> One of my initial worries about this advert, which I'm actually gonna double back on actually, is that people would come across this advert and think, ooh, like a kind of large-ish looking lizard, that's really cool, I'm gonna buy it. But also, it's $600, and most people aren't just gonna drop $600 on an animal they know nothing about. Mind you, people do do that very frequently with buying puppy mill dogs off of Craigslist. Um, so you can never put that past someone. But regardless, but regardless of any animal that you choose to bring home, whether from the internet or a private breed or a pet store, wherever, please do thorough research because this is going to be one heckin' chonker of a lizard. Um, and for someone who's unprepared for those jaws, which are super powerful, and that tail which can do an immense just whipping damage, it might be a bit of a shock to somebody. So I hope that again this animal goes to a really good, knowledgeable, loving and experienced home because experience is necessary with an Argus monitor. And finally we've come to an abomination. <coughs> Not that abomination. We're talking about the blue hedgehog. I thought that this was a troll post the first time I saw it, but nope. Rehoming blue hedgehog in Denver. Meet Barry. Barry, not Barry. Oh my god, Barry would be such a great name for him though. <laughs> Meet Barry. Note, I'm not the one who dyed the poor guy blue, just the one trying to give him a second chance. I know this guy will make somebody a great BFF with a little time and patience. I've finally gotten him social enough and clean enough to find a forever home. If this guy was more blue before this, I mean, talk about Oompa Loompa, but this person who is kindly trying to rehome him and do the right thing um, has done some serious work if it's like he's finally at the point that he can be rehomed. Wow. He's not a novelty. He shouldn't be blue. It's been at least two months since whoever dyed him and he can still stain clothing and towels after a bath if you're not careful. I'm not sure he'll ever look normal again. <laughs> oh, Barry. <laughs> Barry is only going to a knowledgeable home that can show me proof of a cage or bin, a heat source, food and water bowls, and a hide of some sort. You'll get a hedgehog safe with a wheel with ba Barry, 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 along with some food. Rehoming fee of $200, so I know he's going to a truly interested, committed party. Email me for more info if you're interested in Barry. I am shocked and appalled that anyone would think that it is in any way, shape or form okay to dye a hedgehog blue. Now, I am not like in any way a, a, a purist when it comes to pets. I think people should be able to enjoy their pets and have fun with them as long as it's not hurting the animal. Um, and certain dyes are okay for certain creatures. For example, there's competitive grooming for uh, many poodles, for example. Um, poodle hair really lends itself to being um, coloured and groomed, um, and there are professionals out there for this, but, but hedgehog dyeing is not a thing, and it certainly shouldn't be a thing. Hedgehogs do have a predisposition to develop allergies and intolerances. Certainly, I have no idea what is in this particular colouring. It was obviously very potent, whatever it was, to still be on this hedgehog two months later after lots and lots of washing. I think this hedgehog is lucky to be alive, really. The stress alone could have killed it from the dying. I mean, the dye really has to sit on the hedgehog, and whoever dyed this hedgehog went to great lengths to make sure that the entire hedgehog was covered, including its spine. Let's hope that it was at least a pet safe one and not human hair dye, or, or goodness forbid, uh, an imported cheap box dye from somewhere else with all kinds of nasty fillers in it and toxic chemicals. Um, because the hedgehogs will clean themselves, they like to lick themselves they want to be clean, um, they also anoint themselves with various smelly things that they find, um, but regardless, uh, this is not a normal substance for a hedgehog to be um, exposed to, and it's really, really sad to see that somebody thought, like, let's just dye a hedgehog blue. I, I don't know what the thought process is behind it. Were they trying to imitate Sonic? Were they just being silly? 
I don't know, but it's just so sad and this poor hedgehog is gonna pay the price. I mean, he looks like he's been through the wars. He really looks that way and he probably doesn't trust humans that much. This person who's kindly taken him in has been trying to work with him and I hope that he finds himself in a great home where someone's gonna be really patient and not just exploit him for the fact that he's blue and turn him into some kind of like social media celebrity or something, but I really hope he ends up in a really caring home. I would personally have priced him maybe a little bit higher because 200 is still pretty low for a hedgehog um, and and although this person says he's not a novelty um, he will be a novelty to many people so I hope that he does go to a really good and knowledgeable home and just don't die your hedgehogs people don't die your hedgehogs there's, there's no reason to die most animals uh, especially at such a small and delicate creature as an African pygmy hedgehog which is susceptible to heart failure of all things so please don't go subjecting your animals to this it's not fair it's not kind it's not funny it's not impressive it's just cruel so please don't do it and that is it for today everyone I hope you enjoyed today's video and that you found it somewhat educational somewhat entertaining um, and also just opened your eyes to be a little bit more careful about the animals that you might decide to purchase off the internet if you have a suggestion for the next city or location I should do a, a, a subsequent follow-up video of this sort too whether it is Texas or Pennsylvania let me know down in a comment below and I will see what I can do when my heart feels up to it thank you all so much for watching I will see you in another video soon bye Barry.